In God We Trust. When was the last time that you read the dollar bill? When was the last time that any of you felt outraged by said religious inequalities or references? Probably not many of us. We carry, see, and exchange money numerous times daily, and most of us do not acknowledge what it says, nor do we care. Good afternoon, Mr. Redekin and class. Today, my partner Adam and I will prove the functionality of our nation's status quo. Our philosophy? The removal of all religious re references is not financially feasible and would dismantle long-standing governmental traditions. In order to win, the affirmative must deliver a plan that is both desirable and practical. Both. Please keep this in mind. Additionally, the affirmative must exhibit need to remove all religious references, as stated by the resolution. In God, we trust. Who is we? We is the dynamic social fabric of our nation. Collectively, we are a plethora of religions. Some of us are non-believers. Both Adam, Adam and I appreciate the uniqueness of American people and religious groups. Today, the affirmative will discuss the exclusive nature of religious references in government, such as the mention of God on American currency. They will argue that, that this is unequal for those who are of different faith or are atheist or agnostic. These people are separate from the we. However, the mention of God on our money does not infringe on religious and or intellectual equality. It is indisputable that our country's founders were predominantly Christian. This is irrelevant, though, since there was consensus for the religious freedom that exists today. As defined by dictionary.com, freedom is exemption from external control, interference, and regulation. Additionally, equality is the state or quality of being equal, correspondence in value, rank, or ability. The First Amendment, which is accessible to every citizen in this country, declares, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. The mention of God on American currency in the Pledge of Allegiance and any and all other references in American society clearly exist. However, they do not in any way infringe on the rights of atheists and agnostics. They do not keep them from exercising their freedoms. In no way is any one religion, or religion in general, forced upon Americans. This begs the question, to what extent are government and religion connected? The curious story of Californian inmate Billy Paul Birdwell answers this best. In order to practice his religion, Birdwell demanded to have open space and a fire pit while in prison. His requests were honored, but when prison officials later replaced that, that space with non-denominational or non-religious outdoor area, Birdwell claimed that his needs were not met. According to the SIRS article in which I found this story by Oliver Thomas, there are limits as to how far we as a nation can go in protecting the rights of citizens to exercise their beliefs. Why is this relevant? It is the government's job to balance the religious liberty rights of the individual against the public's rights to maintain a civil society. While promoting religious equality, it must simultaneously protect the rights of different beliefs groups. This is why the Affirmative Plan cannot work. In asserting religious freedom and protecting people's rights, there is inherently some degree of associating between the government and religion. Dictionary.com defines associating as to connect or bring into relation. This must exist for a civil and unified society. What the Affirmative is proposing is to rid the government entirely of this relationship. Do we really want this? Again, the affirmative must outline a plan that is both desirable and practical. Why is it so urgent to remove all religious references from governmental procedures? Many of us do not notice or care that our currency, for instance, says God. Why should we prioritize an issue that the masses do not care about? It would be financially impractical and undesirable, especially in our low growth, stagnant economy. My partner Adam will thoroughly elaborate on this. Furthermore, the affirmative must, may say, or they have said, that it is relevant because there are increasing numbers of atheists and non-believers in the U.S., but this is only partially correct. A 2012 poll this year, the Global Index of Religiosity and Atheism, found that the number of Americans who say they're atheists did rise from 1 to 5 percent. These numbers were skewed since 2007. According to a Huffington Post article, the poll may not show that more people are becoming atheists, but rather that more people are willing to identify as atheists. 
This is important because it is merely a difference in title and not in beliefs. The issue is not as relevant as it appears to be. Overall, the affirmative's reasons for change are not practical, logical, or desirable. Thank you. Please vote negative.